everyone. And uh, for this technical session too, we have uh, five presenters, and then we will be beginning with all of them. Uh, we will be beginning with uh, Jubina, so Jubina uh, and uh, Ms. Garima, then Nargish, Pooja, Pooja Josi, and Jaya, Jaya Bhatta. So uh, we five presenters, five presenters means we will be uh, dedicating uh, five to eight minutes each paper presentation and then at the end of paper presentations, we will be having previous question answer session. And then if uh, they allow, if organizers allow, then we can have at least paper presentation as well. And then other person was also uh, lost, uh, not get connected in the uh, session. So I think uh, the first presenter can start. Uh, Jubina Rocha, are you there? Or is it to disturb? I have presented my paper in the first session. Can I leave the session? But your name is in the second session. No, no, I have. Sorry. I have presented the paper in first session. So can okay. I don't have, don't have paper in the second session, right? Yes, yes. I have presented the paper. I am asking that can I leave this session or I have to stay here? If you have presented, then it's up to you. Very one. Okay. But make sure that you have uh, reported to the right person. You have told to the organizers that your session uh, is separate. Yes, Archana man has Archana man has organized this session and we have completed. Means we four, four person. All right. All right. Now, okay. Excuse, excuse me, sir. May I? Yes. Excuse. Actually, I have mis I have uh, mistakenly joined the other uh, I mean um, other room. I I think room uh, uh, number one. Uh, I think my presentation uh, is uh, listed in in this um, uh, uh, this session eleven to twelve, sir. Yeah. Are you ready with your presentation? Yeah, sir. Actually, my name is Jubina Rosa uh, with my uh, supervisor, Dr. Rabindra Das Sharma. Okay. Are you ready with the paper? Okay, sir. I'm ready. Yeah. Introduce yourself and we start the paper presentation. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, there are some uh, like um, internet con uh, connectivity problem uh, here. Uh, so I am Jubina Rosa Aces. I'm from uh, Rosa Scholar from Central University of Jagand. Uh, so um, uh, um, I'm not wasting much time. Uh, so I'm very happy to get an opportunity to present my paper here. So thank, uh, first of all, thank you all. And um, so my uh, title of my paper is the representation of the plights of Dalit women. Uh, some messages are. Dear room three participants, there is a message from admin. Uh, dear uh, room three participants, we will send you a new link in time. Ma'am, you me, please, sir? yes, you please continue. You are in room two. Please continue, ma'am. Some uh, participants okay. are here from room three. Okay, sorry, for, sorry, sir. sorry, ma'am. Sorry, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, title of my paper is The Representation of the Plights of Dalit Women Reading Bama's Sangati. So, uh, Sangati is an autobiographical work by Bama. So, it deals with uh, uh, gender bias faced uh, by Dalit women right from their childhood. Girl children are always considered inferior and uh, taken less care. So the narrator of this book is a young girl in the early and, and in the early chapters grows pensive due to the myriad events happening around that girl. So as she grows into a young woman, she stresses on the need for change and is calling out for action against atrocities that happen to the girls and women in her community. So um what uh, pa there are patriarchal distinctions or so patriarchal distinctions are initially inculcated in a girl a child within the first 10 years of uh, her life and gender games acts as uh, effective tools to achieve this goal 
as such bama as a young girl of 12 learns that uh, boys have uh, some uh, different uh, roles to play than girls which are perpetuated in the form of gender games that they are made to play as children so while uh, games like uh, some uh, uh, games i have to mention here kabaddi uh, and marbles are meant for boys so uh, spe- uh, these games are specially uh for boys and uh, girls uh, play like um at cooking uh, get, uh, like um acting like getting married and uh, other domestic matters so it is related to uh, the domestic and the uh, kind of uh, um uh, domestic matters so it can evidently seen in the following uh, section in the uh, work uh, uh, sangadi by bama so uh, i caught even when we played our mothers and fathers we always had to serve the mud rice to the boys first mud rice to the boys first they used to pull us by the hair and hit us says what so- sort of food is this without salt or anything and in those days we used to accept these uh, what um, pretends uh, blows and think it was all good for fun so nowadays for many of the girls those have uh, become real blows and their end their lines are hell so uh, i uncut so dalit community uh, uh, like elders consider boys as permanent members in a family because they are supposed to take care of their parents or take care of the family so on the other hand female children are uh, what transient uh, uh, members who are to be trans uh, what transferred to uh, f- from this family to another family and so have to no role to play in their families so this causes gender prejudices uh, even in the minds of the parents uh, from the early upbringing uh, early uh, time of upbringing so dalit girl children are hi- hardly enjoying uh, their childhood they have little time to play as they have to take care of their younger siblings even so uh, here uh, in the uh, work also in the, uh, in in, in sagari there are so much incidents uh, so i'm not coding each and every uh, portion from the work so bama here uh, realistically portrays the physical violence like lynching whipping and scanning that dalit women suffers by the male members of the family like fathers brothers and even the role like uh, father brother husband uh, the typical conventional role uh, of indian family so she explores the psychological stresses and uh, strains um, of them and uh, she uh, the writer cleverly robs in the prevailing subordinate condition of women through the ages as a girl woman a breadwinner for the family and her place in the church so all of this proved a, a kind of claustrophobic to the women folk of the dalit community so the two stories that bama reminds is that of uh, mariamma and tai whose uh, marital disharmonies are revealed in an attempt to stereotype the dalit predicament so they are ill treated and uh, beaten up daily by their husbands although both the husband and wife came after a hard uh, days work in the field the husband went straight to the what um, cowardly to while away their time coming home only for the meals and but as for the wife they return home uh, were, what uh, the daily routine such as uh, washing utensils clean the house uh, collect water uh what a gather firewood go to the shops to buy rice for cooking and uh, other provision feed the husband and children before they sleep eat what is left over and go to bed this is the a typical uh, routine of uh, the lead uh, girl or the lead woman so even um, Mm, mm, uh, they lay down their bodies stacked with pain they are not allowed to sleep whether she dies or survives she had to give pleasure and enjoyment to her husband that is i'm uh, uh, i just caught it from the uh, work itself sangadi uh, page number 59 so uh, uh, in sangadi bama subverts mainstream legends and ask relevant questions pertaining to her culture so the st- uh, story of uh, tiruvallur the great tamil poet's uh, wife uh, vasuki perceived as the epitome of chastity and devotion to husband is mentioned to illustrate the subordinate position of women in marriage 
So the story she feels in a reminder that wives ate after feeding their husbands, even during Thiruvallur's time. So Bama offers an alternate folk song uh, about um, uh, what uh, a, a, a deity uh, and who was uh, like um, uh, no 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 uh, who was beaten up for eating crab curry before uh, serving her husband. This is also from uh, uh, the um, textbook. So um, uh, I caught from the text crab crab my pretty little crab who wandered through all the fields I planted I pull off your clothes and put on it in a pot I gave the pot a hot and set it down I waited and waited for him to come home and began eating as came through the door he came to hit me the hung hungry brute he pounced at me to kill me so and got from page number 30 so the above mentioned lines remind uh, what remind the current position or the condition of Dalit woman even in the 20th century. Even we uh, know we are love, uh, living in the 21st century. So the work has written earlier. So Dalit women are often considered as easy praise to the men because of their repressed state over like overworked and exploited in the family. These women give vent to the mental agony in their spirit uh, possessed state. So uh, I'm not reading in my entire paper uh, some of the uh, important uh, part or portion. Uh, I just so read. Have already taken the time. Let to please conclude the paper. Okay, sir. Let me conclude my paper. So, um, uh, so um, here um, the Bama Fastina, uh, the writer. Uh, described or illustrated the experiences of a Dalit woman and her thoughts about the existing issues of women in her community that uh, what com uh, comprise of the problems of uh, education of girls, wife or daughters beating, uh, kind of uh, abuse, sexual abuse and dishonor, uh, like um, daily plays, uh, like uh, many, many, many things, parentage, maternity, uh, liability of maternity, etc., etc. So, uh, because of the time limit, uh, limit uh, I just conclude my paper. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much uh, for the uh, uh, for giving me uh, an opportunity to um, present my paper here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Zubina. Thank you so much. Uh, the audience might be having some questions. They'll ask at the end of the uh, paper presentations. So now we can call our second presentation. Thank you so much, Jimmy. It was really a nice uh, presentation and it was nicely researched paper. Now, Jimmy, you can make your presentation. First, introduce yourself and then start your paper. Hello everyone, myself Garima Singh. I am research scholar, Department of English, Baba Mastat University, Rohatak, Haryana. The title of my paper is a comparative study of female characters in literature produced during Victorian period and the current period, which is postmodern period. In English history, the period of the reign of Queen Victoria from 1837 to 1901 is known as the Victorian period. Then begins the modern period, which roughly ranges from 1900 to 1940 as the postmodern and postmodern era began after the end of Second World War. As we all know, literature is the reflection of society. So the works produced and characters sketched during a particular period is often a reflection of the societal norms and practices of that particular time. In Victorian era, women had one sole aim in life, which was to get married, bear children and obey their husbands. They had no identity and aspirations of their own in life. They were considered fit only for domestic purposes like cleaning the house, cooking food for the family, taking care of the children and submissively fulfilling the needs of their husbands. They even lacked basic rights such as right to vote, right to seek formal education, etc. Literature produced during Victorian period was no different. It portrayed women as they were in reality during that time, docile, uneducated, submissive and obedient having only one identity which was that of a married woman and for unmarried ones the main aim depicted in victorian novels is pursuing suitors for marriage 
in contrast to this the condition of women saw a significant change as compared to the victorian period in modern and then postmodern period both in society as well as in literature women now have rights such as right to vote right to education also women are now aware of their potentials and they are becoming independent in almost all spheres of life they no longer limit their identities as only being someone's wife mother rather they want to be known and recognized as individuals primary concern of this paper shall be on discussing the female characters in the different eras and how they have changed literature has witnessed the roles of women evolving through different ages women characters in literature have more or less been in sync with the actual condition of women in society as the time changed both the condition of women in society and portrayal of women in literature witnessed a significant transition beginning from victorian period till the postmodern era i will trace this transition primarily let's begin with female characters in victorian period first the first character that i would like to discuss is william makepeace starkrae's novel vanity fair's novel uh, character the novel was published in 1848 the novel primarily focuses on two major female characters namely becky sharp and amelia sedley these two female characters are the perfect embodiment of the condition of women in victorian era on one hand where becky sharp is portrayed as a social climber whose sole aim in life is to seduce trap and get married to men of upper class and live a luxurious life without making any effort of on her own throughout the novel becky sharp is shown seducing various men one after the other she is unapologetically portrayed as a gold digger without any individual identity of her own In the novel, she is depicted as the direct opposite of the other female character called Amelia Sedley. Amelia Sedley is shown as a kind-hearted and docile girl, though she is not a cunning girl like Becky Sharp, and is exact opposite of her. But they both have one essential similarity, which is not having a identity of their own. Just like Becky Sharp, Amelia Sedley also has one sole aim: just to get married and settle down and has have, have a family. that was the reality of victorian society basically a woman's identity and role in life was just to look for a suitor woo him either by hook or crook get married be a children and obey the husband for the rest of her life individual identity and independence of a female were completely neglected and females too were ignorant of their worth as individuals they were sort of brainwashed in a manner by society that being a woman means being docile and obeying the husband Next example of such sort of portrayal of female characters during Victorian era is the novel The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot published in 1860. The novel centers around a girl called Maggie Tulliver. She's a intelligent and imaginative child. In the beginning of her of the novel, she's she has a brilliant she's shown to have a brilliant presence of mind and knowledge grasping power but her father denies her the right to education and asks her to sit at home and learn household chores so that she can get married without any difficulty and her father after denying maggie the basic right to education sends her brother tom juliver to a good boarding school where he can get proper education despite knowing the fact that his son is not at all interested in studies whereas maggie tuliver is passionate to learn things and enhance her knowledge through the character of maggie tuliver and how she was blatantly denied the right to education george eliot has highlighted the biggest social issue of victorian society which was to restrict women from getting education calling it not of any use to them and they were forced to learn cooking cleaning stitching weaving etc in order to increase their prospects of marriage this this was the case with maggie tuliver with george juliet portrayed in the novel mill on the floss moving on we come across yet another victorian work which is a short story titled as the yellow wallpaper by charlotte perkins gilman published in 1892 from the point of view of victorian society Charlotte Perkins Gilman presented this work as a warning to her readers about the consequences of fixed gender roles assigned by male dominated society according to which man is the power center of the household and is in the decision making position whereas a woman has only one aim which is to obey that man handle the household duties bear children raise them she cannot question the authority of the husband under any circumstance and suffering in silence due to both mental and physical exertion is a normal consequence of being a woman in this short story protagonist is suffering from serious mental health issue post 
the birth of her child but her husband is completely ignorant of her condition and asks her continuously to stay at home and take care of the child he is not able to understand the mental condition of his wife he confines her into a room called nursery and asks her to stay there all the time as a means to cure her mental health he puts restrictions on her and calls it rest cure which further aggravates her suffering as she is completely unable to express her condition to anyone and is forced to pretend that everything is all right the narrator says in the middle of the story that john my husband laughs at me of course but one expects that in a marriage this line shows the emotions of the wife as her husband makes fun of her situation and how she says that it is a normal thing to happen in a marriage through this story the writer has depicted how victorian women used to suffer in silence and how they were forced into domestication by men and they never had a option to question their male counterparts next novel is in the same sequence is middle march a study of provincial life by george eliot published in 1871 sorry to interrupt you could you please take some let me like, talk about victorian novels this is the now uh, modern and then Uh, characters. Yes, yeah, so you are comparing. Uh, you are you are making a comparative study, right, between Victorian and modern Victorian versus modern and postmodern period. So uh, you are so talking about the relevant characters from Victorian. Now I can come to the current period. Okay, yeah, sir. Yeah, I can come to the current period, modern and postmodern. Now, from the current period, I would like to talk about a work by Carol Churchill called "Top Girls," published in nineteen eighty-two. This work centers around a strong fem- female character called Merlin. Merlin is depicted as a career-driven woman who was recently got promoted to the post of managing director of the employment agency where she works. She is a woman who is not ready to give up on her independence and career for anything. She is portrayed as being completely unapologetic in making her life choices. She is committed to be at the top in whatever she does. through her character carol churchill tries to point out the importance of female independence and how a woman have to sacrifice a lot of things to achieve financial independence in her life and how people around women try to pull them down and make them feel ashamed for choosing their own path in life by making them feel guilty and on the other hand how men are qu- never questioned and made to feel guilty and ashamed for working and not being able to be there for their children and family it is normalized in society but women are shamed for following their dreams but the attitude of merlin to not give up on her dreams no matter what she was accused of stands as a inspiration for every working woman and young girls who dream of having financially independent life merlin throughout the novel is continuously accused of not giving focus to her family her daughter but she ignores everything and is committed to rise and she just gets at the top of her game even in the character of merlin and from the victorian we can see a comparison that how in victorian society women were told like they have to stay at home and be domesticated but now as the time changed the society has also changed like merlin merlin is not just a character she is the embodiment of the current times and how society has changed from victorian to this period now women don't sit at home and do not confine their identity to domestication they want to work outside they have a identity of their own individuality this is the transition that i was talking about the river got disconnected let's wait for her to rejoin So next presenter will be your Nargis. Yes, sir. Let's wait for Garima if she comes back. I think she had some problem in her connection. So Nargis, are you making PowerPoint presentation or paper reading? No, sir. It's paper reading. Okay.
Your paper is titled Afghan Women Amidst Sociopolitical Power Dynamics. Yes, sir. How much time it will require to make you the presentation? I think seven to eight minutes, sir. Try to work the paper within the time limit. Okay, sir. Garima, Garima is not joining. We will wait for one or two minutes because he has not completed yet, I think. I think we can proceed for the next So shall I start? Uh, yeah, introduce yourself and then you can start. Okay, so a very good morning to all. My name is Nargis Gul and I'm a research scholar from Baba Gulam Shabacha University, Jammu and Kashmir. I'm here to present my paper entitled Afghan Women Amid a Social Political Power Dynamics. And here is how it goes. The issues of Afghan women have significantly attracted international attention during Taliban era, but there is a history of over centuries of women's subjugation in Afghanistan. Amidst the decades of instability in the country, the women have been subjected to the wrath of various social political power agendas. Gender issues have always remained in proximity to the Nargis, major. Maybe just, just want to interrupt you. Garima has joined. Garima, have you finished your paper or you have something to say more? Garima, unmute yourself. Okay, continue, Nargis. Continue, please. Gender issues have always remained in proximity to the major political and social events in the country. Afghanistan is predominantly a patriarchal society where all the institutions of power are governed by men. The gender roles are determined by patriarchal power structure in which men employ unlimited power over women. The patriarchal arrangements are deeply embedded in tribal traditions which have always remained reluctant to change. The patriarchal design of Afghan society limits women's access to freedom, education, and employment opportunities, and thus prohibits them to grow as individuals with dignity and independent identity. Afghan women seem to have been majorly affected by the political scenario of the country as they have become a part of national construction agenda since 1920s. The reign of King Amanullah from 1923 to 29 was one of the several attempts to redesign the gender dynamics of the country. He abolished polygamy, bride price, increased the age of marriage, and encouraged the education of women. The women of King Amanullah's family were enthusiastically involved in the upliftment of Afghan women and started the first organization for women's welfare, founded the first magazine and a hospital for them. They believed that the development of society is not possible by the service of men alone, but women need to be an essential part of it, and that's possible by attaining as much knowledge as possible. Encouraging the education of women, 15 girls were sent to Turkey in 1928 for higher education. Kabul was the heart of reformation during 1920s, but the women living in tribal and rural areas did not receive any benefit of modernization. The conservative rural people of Afghanistan saw these rapid changes too Western for the nation. The tribal leaders considered the abolishment of polygamy and introduction of girls' education as a challenge for the male authority. The changing status of women thus became a root cause for the conflict between modernists and traditionalists in the country. The rigid tribal leadership has frequently hampered the modernization efforts in the country and mostly prohibited the rural areas from any progressive change. By late 1920s, the tribal leaders formed coalitions to oppose the freedom women were enjoying in urban areas. When the age of marriage was raised to 18 years for girls and 21 years for boys, they held a sway all over the country, forcing King Abanullah to resort to more traditional design of social change. The 
schools for girls in rural and urban areas were shut down and women were forced to observe veil. The forceful liberal reforms of the king proved to be detrimental for his rule and ultimately led to his exile. In this period, we saw a despotic monarch on one hand forcing change upon people and on the other, tribal leaders resisting any reformers they sus suspected could be jeopardizing for their ethnic prominence. This started an ideological debate of traditionalism and modernism in the country of which gender issues have always remained a part. The tussle between these two groups proved hazardous, especially for women's rights, because the resistance to Modernist short-lived liberal reforms by traditionalists brought violent and subjugating policies upon women. In the post-monarchy period, women issues were once again given some attention and a need was felt to involve them to achieve targeted development goals. In 1950s, there were increasing number of female nurses, doctors and teachers as they were encouraged to contribute to the economy of the country under the leadership of then Prime Minister Dawood Khan. In 1964, the third constitution of the country granted suffrage to the women and permission to enter into politics. 1970s marked as another period for women's reform as the period saw increase in women's education, recruitment in education institutions and representation in politics. The period of late 1970s saw the eruption of controversial Soviet-backed People's Democratic Party of Afghanistan, under which various policies were devised to change the social scenario of the country. Their mass literacy campaign for both boys and girls, abolishment of pride price, raising the age of marriage was, was perceived by many as unwanted interference in the life of Afghan people. The education of women in particular was viewed as going against the grain of culture and religion. The PDPA's coercive strategies of change along with their disregard for the cultural and religious sentiments of the people resulted in the strong opposition from rural areas. The Soviets occupied Afghanistan in 1979, starting a 10-year-long war with Mujahideen. The war resulted in a massive destruction of the country and dislocation of Afghan people, along with the reversal of all the progress pertaining to women attained so far. The Mujahideen period from 1992 to 96 was a period of barbarism, where the stories of rape, amputations, and clings became commonplace. The Taliban rule from 1996 to 2001, which started with an intention to stabilize the politics of the country, ended up being the most detrimental rule for women. Their misogynist policies deprived women from education and employment, caged them in their homes, put restrictions on their lifestyle, autonomy, and freedom. Adopting an extreme version of gender segregation, they confined women to the private sphere and granted themselves the undeniable access to constitute and govern public pub public affair. The constitution, they continued uh, conflicts and period of political instability, created a breeding ground for intensification of patriarchies. The fundamentalists reinforced the misogynist policies claiming to secure the honor of the nation, which comes to be symbolized by women, especially during the times of conflict than the times of relative peace. Women were more than men punished, beaten, and killed in the name of honor. The fundamentalists blended the culture and religious principles to curb women's rights and ensure the sustenance and, of their own ethnic and political prominence. The bodies of women thus became a battleground of domination for various powers under the guise of protecting them from the gaze of enemy. The women of Afghanistan became part of a bigger political game of 9-11, when United States used them as a pawns to justify their intervention in the country. The pictures of Afghan women were widely circulated by Western media to disguise their imperial agenda of West as a campaign of saving Afghan women. The US war in Afghanistan from 2001 to 21 led the country to extreme economic degradation. After the decades of insurgency on August 15, 2021, Taliban regained their control on Afghanistan. Based on the fear of the brutalities in the previous regime, the recent takeover created havoc in the entire nation. The desperation of the people could be seen as they were trying to flee the country in an overloaded military plane. Despite their promises to permit women to exercise their rights, the Taliban rule was met with skeptical eyes. The inconsistency in their words and actions have again plunged the future of Afghan women into uncertainty. Now I would move towards the conclusion. It's, it's evident from the historical background of Afghanistan that the oppression of Afghan women resulted from a blend of social and political factors. 
The sporadic attempts of social reform in the country failed because of the essential tribal and patriarchal mindset of Afghan society, which, which views progress of women as challenge to male authority and attempt to annihilate Afghan culture and religion. The prolonged war has claimed thousands of human lives, destroyed the human development in institutions, and forced the country into extreme poverty. The women have been affected by all sides of the conflict due to absence of institutions and legal protection of women rights. The issues were governed by tribal justice systems, which used traditions invariably against women who are relatively powerless section of the society. Women have been uh, impacted by all sides of the conflict as 80% of refugees are women and children and the economic deprivation from wars have forced them into beggary and prostitution. Thus, in order to better understand Afghan women as victims of social complexities and political conspiracies, we need to analyze their situation within a large historical context than confining them to limiting factors of a limited period of time. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nargis. You have a nice lecture from starting from nineties, nineteen thirties, and before that, and then develop the law. In the contemporary scenario, we have been affected by the oppressed in a social, social political atmosphere of Afghan. Yes, sir. And you have nicely presented the paper. Thank you very much. Uh, if there are questions, we will be asking you uh, at the end of the session. Now yes, we have next presenter. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next presenter is Pooja Joshi. She is research scholar at MIT University, Noida. Pooja, are you there? Pooja Joshi. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Good morning, Pooja. Introduce yourself and then uh, start with your paper. Yes, I will be uh, presenting the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, can you see my screen? It is not visible. I think you can see it. Yeah, it is. It is visible. First of all, uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to take part in the uh, conference from beginning in this lecture. My name is Pooja Joshi and I am a research scholar from Amity University, Noida. And uh, this paper is co-authored by Dr. Anil Sera, who is a professor and deputy director in Amity University. The title of my paper is Discourses on Women, Role of Social Institutions in Few Months' Case, The Invention of Women. So before we move on to the topic, first of all, uh, let's discuss what are discourses. Discourse refers to the way in which knowledge is organized in a society in such a way that it structures the social relations by institutionalizing a particular way of thinking while undermining others. So basically, this idea of discourse was given by Michel Foucault in his work, The Archaeology of Knowledge which uh, defines discourse as uh, that it is a way that knowledge is organized in the society in such a way and it is communicated through language which makes some power relations in the society. Discourse influences the way in which ideas are put into practice and how these ideas regulate the conduct of the society. Here, Stuart Hall uh, has defined uh, in the West and the West, all social practices entail meaning and meaning shapes and influences what we do, all the practices that we have possess a discursive aspect to them. So even when people are not being controlled by a physical force, they are somehow controlled by these discourses and they act in a certain way uh, because these discourses are regulating the social relations in the society. Next is discourses on women. Foucault argues that in a society, the social interactions of the individual are controlled through a system of power and knowledge creation, which also dictates their perception about the world. In society, women face several power discourses which affect their self-perception. So in the society, women are uh, uh, expected to behave in a certain way. They are expected to act in a certain way. And that is because of these discourses that are there in the society. Though they are not controlled physically, uh, but they are following certain rules and norms 
and they are behaving in a certain way because the discourses are running there in the society aspects such as the education level career choices and the standards of womanhood are affected because of the power discourses existing in the society so first notion that power is constitutive of that upon which it acts has enabled feminists to explore the ways in which women's experiences self understanding and capacities are constructed by the power relations that are they are trying to transform so even when uh, 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 women are trying to uh, transform some power relations but those are also affected by her own experiences because of those power relations uh, only next is the invention of women i have taken this novel for studying the discourses on women in society uh, uh, this novel has been written by siu man kid and it is a historical fiction it uh, siu man kid takes into account the story of sara moor binte and angelina binte and a slave hetty hatton so these are the correct, uh, main female characters in the invention of women and uh, siu man kid has taken the account of Sarah and Angelina Binte, who were actually two abolitionist sisters who existed in 19th century America, and they were the first uh, among the first women to take part in abolition movement, as well as they were the early leaders in women's rights movement. Sarah and Angelina were among the first women to take part in the abolition movement, as I have written here. Kids, through her female character, has described the women's struggle. for liberation expression and empowerment power discourses in the invention of women the female characters in kids novel are affected by several discourses in the society the novel is set in the 19th century charleston south carolina when the ideas of the equality of gender and race were considered as right the women the women in kids novel feel restricted because of the limits imposed on them Foucault's view is that power is a product of the individual interaction and is deeply rooted in the social relations of a society. In this novel, the women feel restricted because uh, though Sarah is a white woman, but she is not allowed to take a conventional education. Apart from that, she is uh, restricted to enter the library at her home. Sarah Dimke is educated at home, unlike her brother. Who receives the conventional education? So she is given education at home, which is very womanly education, uh, that we can call it. Throughout her childhood, Sarah was aware of the inferiority of her education when compared to her brother. Sarah Dimke is gifted a slate heavy handful as her birthday present. It has shown both heavy and Sarah as slate, one from the body and the other from the mind. Another character, Hetty Handful, who is a slave, uh, is uh, contrasted with the character of Sarah Grimke because Sarah is a white woman. She is not a slave. Still, she is a slave from the mind. She has been presented as that. Though Hetty Handful is a uh, slave from the body, but Sarah is a slave from the mind. Sarah's wish to be an attorney is shattered only because it is considered unwomanly in the society she lives in. Here is a quote from the book. For a woman to aspire to be a lawyer, well, possibly the world would end. Resistance by female character. Uh, where there is power, there is also resistance. According to Foucault, resistance is always inside power and cannot escape. The women in kids' novels, though oppressed by the social constructs around them, showed enough courage to raise their voice. The acts of resistance can be seen in Sarah's refusal to accept a slave as a birthday present. Though she is only 11 years old, she despises slavery. Hetty Handful also tries to challenge the system of slavery because of which she suffers sometimes. The society they live in believes that a woman should never ask for something more from life and should know her place in the society. The female characters. Challenge the various power discourses in instances like Sarah's act of teaching Hetty and her wish to be a jailer. 
Though living in a society which does not allow the women to follow their dreams, Angelina and Sarah decide to speak for the abolition and women's rights movement, training against the expectation of their family and society. Even when they are living in a society which doesn't allow them to follow their dreams or to speak their mind, they still resist it and they uh, decide to speak for the abolition movement and uh, they become the early leaders in women's rights movement. The other female characters, which are the minor characters in the novel, also show some form of resistance against the So here's the conclusion that uh, uh, I have uh, studied the novel, The Invention of Wings, in the light of Cooper's knowledge and power. And uh, in the words of human came from an interview, she has written The Invention of Wings, my last novel. That book was largely about women being empowered to find their voice. The power struggle of female characters against societal norms is shown in the novel in such a way that it inspires the women to find the same kind of courage and audacity in today's society also. So uh, these are the references. And uh, here I can uh, thank you so much. Here is the end of my presentation. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was a nice presentation, nicely presented. Any questions, then there will be questions after the paper presentations. Oh. So be there. And now next enter is RJ Partha. Yes, sir. Program. I'm Jay Pratha. Yes, sir. Yeah. Shall I continue, sir? Yeah. Let me share the screen and then let me continue. Is it for you, sir? Sure, sir. Ah, sure, sir. Sure, I'll do. Kindly let me know if my screen is visible to everyone. Yes, it is visible. Fine. OK, fine. So the title of my paper is uh, Motherhood as an Institution in Atwoods, The Handmaid's Tale, a Socio-Psychological Approach. I wish to introduce myself. I am Jay Pratha, research scholar uh, from VV Vane Permal College for Women, Virudhanagar, which is in Tamil Nadu. So. Uh, this particular tale, The Handmaid's Tale, written by the prophet of dystopia, Margaret Atwood, got published in the year 1985. It is a dystopian fiction picturizing a patriarchal dystopia, and it has won a couple of great awards uh, with its stroke of fiction, imagination, as well as projection. So it started, considering this uh, women in literature, uh, like uh, in reality, it started from the mythology of Adam and Eve, as it is said that, Adam has been the God's creation and Eve has been created only from the rib of Adam. So just to be a companion for him. Being a strong mythology infused into religion, it has been strongly believed and as a consequence had its impact over generations. So now it's like, like uh, women survived being the other and even the weaker sex. Weaker sex. So the similar plight is uh, elaborated in this particular fiction with a dystrophian tone. So here, Offred was the Offred is the protagonist, and she is under the commander Fred. So Offred is one among the handmaids in the Republic of Gilead, and uh, uh, she is completely under surveillance of the uh, polity, the political people. And the commanders are the authoritative figures in Gilead, and handmaids are employed by the commanders when their wives turn infertile. So what is the role of handmaids? It is to have the sexual activity with the commander in the presence of the wife, and their only role is to give birth to the child. So it is considered as a position of honor. The uh, position of handmaids is considered as the position of honor in Gilead. And the lifestyle of men, like uh, it varied according to the roles they are performing in the society. So it is like commanders, they were the supreme people in that hierarchy of uh, Gilead. So it is because they framed the rules uh, for the Gilead in society. They created the Gilead society of Gilead, and thereby guardians, doctors, and economists, many others, like who regulate the functioning of the uh, Republic of Gilead. So if when the professional role, it is the status. When the status is for the men, for women, they are categorized as per their uh, virtue. Like uh, they are judged based on their moral values they possess. So wives. Uh, were married wives 
are those who got married to men of higher status and then marthas are those who do the household works for wives and then comes the econo wives who got married to poor men and then comes the aunt who take care of the handmaids and finally the handmaids are there so who are these handmaids they are women chosen for the birth like a child birth and made fit for the role by the government and government has a history of their fertility rate explain so why are they chosen in the sense when there is some deception which they have done within their family or in the society when they have violated violated any laws of the society then that is it they are condemned to be handmaids uh, when there is a historical record of giving a, a birth to a child so this is it also there is a category called unwomen like when the women are not able to produce children they are categorized as un women and sent to colonies for uh, punishment so this is the plight uh, this is the polity of this uh, republic of gilead so what is the story of ofred ofred had a husband named luke and also she had a daughter so before the rise of gilead she had a perfect family but now it is like her family has been split and she is accused of infidelity and no information has been made on the husband or the children and finally like she is into this red center red center is the place for handmaids and she is there and they are, she is actually trained to fit in the purpose the purpose of being a handmaid so what are the rules how in what way what are the rules that is set for the handmaids they should never communicate with the others never read and write never look anyone in their eyes never question the essentials offered to them never have any hand touches even among themselves never express their feelings or desires never comment on the regulations of gilead and should always be in their red dress with their veil on so it is like they do not even possess an identity of their own not even a name for them because she is serving under the command of fred and so she is named of fred so likewise her identity is totally destructed there now about the next one patriarchy possessed gilead so the concept of micropolitics in the sense man is uh, the majority in the republic of gilead and he is favored by the force the force is acting upon the gender on different scales like for men it is like a repressive ideology like impeding in what it can do and for women it is like an active force which is in it is impeding on action so for a man Uh, a reaction as an authority from men and action as submissive from women is expected from the society a reaction uh, to possess a women like under the concept of like authority authoritativeness and for women to act submissive to men in order to fulfill the roles and responsibilities of the society so it establishes the policy of polity of gilead so the patriarchal patriarchal dominance remains too clear and too absurd when women alone has been blamed for infertility so it seems to be like the men have done their job just after the sexual activity and it is left to women and they are failing every time so there is no word for man to be called as sterile rather it is only for women who can be categorized as fruitful and those who are barren so when the handmaids too could not get conceived by the commander like uh, similar to their wives who were unable to the handmaids were ill treated and sent to colonies so in order to escape that they are again being the victims of the society like the doctor is uh, making an advantage of the situation and uh, he is involving in that sexual activity thereby everything goes under again a patriarchal head so they are being the victims again and again and thereby like social roles is assigned for men uh, and domestic roles for women like uh, uh so uh, social profession including job and opportunities could be served only by men and uh, it is like all bank accounts of women were seized and everything like financial power everything has been transacted to men so the same thing that happened during the ancient times also like uh, uh, the men took care of like finance as well as like having the polity and so like ruling the kingdom fighting the war given they were given the education employment and financial access it was during the ancient time and in such societies women were assigned with the roles of taking care of the family raising the sons as the various loyal to the king raising the daughters with the family values just to serve the men so again it is like reestablished with a sense of um uh is dystopian mode 
so making the women community ineligible to have the access of education employment and finance and this in ineligibility criteria becomes a tool for men to prove their supremacy and the women's inferiority so the next concept motherhood as an institution which is my title so just like the education institution which provides education medical institutions which provides uh, like for treatment which is gets available for treatment military institutions for defense civil institutions for regulatory regulation of the community society pregnancy and motherhood is observed as an institution at preparing the future population of children so as the wives could not get conceived immediately the handmaids are substituted so it is like they are carrying an important purpose for the society the future is in your hands says aunt ridia who takes care of the handmaids and offered realizes that there is nothing in their hands so that is the reality of these handmaids so in this institution of motherhood men take no charge than having the sexual activity so that is it so uh, women are blamed and it is like once uh, offered feels like she has failed to fulfill the expectations of others which have become my own so it is like a duty sexual activity is considered as a duty which is performed to the society not uh, individual uh, preferences given and it establishes the concept of a patriarchal yet patriotic approach like serving the nation and even the handmaids when they have achieved in that purpose like when they are able to deliver a baby to this world they are like uh, being purified from all the sins and violations committed before being a handmaid so it's like a patriarchal as well as patriarchal approach is made towards the role of uh, motherhood and women are made just containers to bear the child like two legged wombs and uh, even the it goes to the extreme of using no uh, anesthetics uh, during uh, the treatment so what is the reward these women achieve in the sense they would not be sent to colonies and they would not be declared unwomen and uh, there is no representation of motherhood among the handmaids in this society of juliet because it is only for the ethically upstanding ladies so the basic right to be a mother that is also denied for this people and finally what is formed is a baby and that is described by atwood as a ghost baby who is not born by a pleasant union but for the reason of a purpose so this is the final division i have made study politics and the strength and bias like commanders who created the republic of juliet its law and regulations were considered the supreme members of that higher of, of that hierarchy so all the people who regulate that are just the secondary so same why, why cannot the same be applied to the case of women women are the ones who are creating the society they are just increasing the population they are just providing the next generation but they are considered submissive so also there is no lawyers in the society to argue for the injustice that is happening to um, happening to the women community in gilead so uh, like when the handmaids like survived in the gaps once offered makes a statement like uh, handmaids are surviving in the gaps they are not even they are in the stories of being like uh, uh, handmaid uh, the same gaps are being used by the men to establish their supremacy like a, a well set family they destroy the family which didn't fit in the patriarchal gilead's frame abandon the members erase their identity prove them faulty and made that family members fit in the society as required so when men says and acts as such so yes what is it the conclusion part here so when men says and acts like uh, like the women should be submissive it couldn't be accepted it may cause some revolt uh because it happens during the times of the mother of offred which she recalls as an nostalgia but when the government says and acts such way uh, incorporating the elements of fear and violence then there is a no room then there is no room for no no because uh, it's the government government's rule and also the government are none but the men in disguise so finally it is like women are uh, women are being the uh, like a the limited choices that is provided for women in gilead make them again and again the victim in every misfortune the prey in the patriarchal play and the clown in the misogynist circus so it is like not just the women uh, not just the motherhood that is considered as an institution rather the entire womanhood is considered as the institution uh, in the regulation of the polity of gilead so with this i wish to conclude thank you thank you very much general nice research report Yes, thank you so much. Um, now we can have questions from the audience. 
questions for the presenters. If you have questions, please ask. No questions? No questions? Okay, I have questions. Let me ask uh, that we begin with the uh, first presenter first. Julia Rosa. Uh, Okay, then let me Garima Garima are you there? Garima Singh. Garima is also not there. Then somebody presented paper on Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, I'm ready. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, sir. This is Dr. Pallavi, sir. My sequence number is first, so can I present, sir? No, your sequence is not in this. This is Dr. about the next session. I think next session is going to start. That has already started at 12 o'clock, and we, are already, we, are, we were having presentations from the second technical session. So my name is there in the second technical session, sir. So I'm the first presenter. No, no, sir. Wow. Wow. Ma'am, my name Actually, is Dr. You are in the first. You are in the third technical session, which has to be started, which has to be oh, started soon. OK, sir. Then I'll join that, sir. Thank you. So Garima has left. Garima is not there. Then Pooja Joshi is there. Yeah, she's there. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah Pooja. Sir, my name is Shibi, and I, I too was in this session. Shibimor Babu. But you are not there. Uh, your your nom name is not there in this, this session. Ma'am, you are in the third session, which has to start as yet. Sir, I, have sir, I have in, sir I have clicked in that link and joined. No, no. The link is the, uh, this one is the only link. Uh, the second session has yet to get completed. And then it, the third session will start. Give it so a while. Here. You have to stay here only. Oh, thank you. I think uh, we they're already running uh, sort of time. So if uh, audience do not uh, have questions, sir. yeah, join for yes. Sir, I am Nishal Nidhi Joy. Uh, I am uh, actually I am also uh, assigned to uh, conference room three uh, in the first slot. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, my uh, I was ended in the wrong slot and I haven't presented it. Uh, can I present now? Please contact the organizers. Okay. Zaya, you were talking about uh, handmade tale, and uh, you're talking about that. You know, when we yes, read this novel, handmade tale, then we find that you know, uh, no doubt, women are the sufferers; they are the sufferers of the patriarchy. But above all, we see there's a sort of religious, uh, religious, religiously ritualized. Uh, uh, yes. totalitarianism, a sort of feminism. We talked about that there are no lawyers to speak for the women because uh, the reference in the novel, um, a lawyer has been hanged on the wall. There is a wall that, yes, that they, they have a sort of for those who speak for women. There. Yes, and one doctor is also hanged on that. So, yes, not only just women, uh, men are also sufferers. You, when you see these guys, uh, army people, they also they always say under his eyes so they are also not make they are not supposed to have conversation with uh, offreds and uh, when we talk about the driver of commander uh, nick nick mm, somehow yes, nick is somehow dares to enter into relation uh, relationship with uh, an offred who is a central character in the novel yes, so uh, above all like uh, a sort of religiously ritualized uh, authoritarianism is taken, take, has taken over, and which is victimizing both men and women. Women, in especial, because uh, there has been an excuse that uh, 
like the uh, the population rate is deteriorating and production rate is deteriorating they have, uh, they have suspended women from the world just because they want them to produce children for the state yes sir but we also close the kind of uh, corruption and the business involved they have also uh, that also has some implication of Uh, child trafficking, human trafficking. We also come across that there are a lot of many children. They have been taken away from their mothers, and yes, they sir. are being sold to the people who are who are not, yeah not having children. Is yes, no, yeah, they are not capable of having children. Is yes, so sir. that is the obviously family is destructive. Yeah, obviously that is a feminist dystopia. But everybody is victim except for the commanders and. Uh, yes, so like, the ones who are in hierarchically high status, like they yeah. are like safe, and for their sake, the people who are like uh, not so hierarchical and at the lower stage, they are like mm. uh, they are being the victims again and again. Yes, yeah. so. and the narrative also talks about a shift in the society that the kind of entirely digitized society they had and the kind yes, of sir. they are completely under surveillance uh, and. Yeah, that applies more the, for these handmaids and the women community is yes, yeah there was a sort of society that was uh, entirely digital she is not she was not able to access cash when she was thrown uh, away from her job and yes, everything was uh, seized the bank account was seized and networks was suspended so before they before this uh, apocalypse, uh, apocalypse comes or this sort of this destruction comes, catastrophe is yes, uh, the society was entirely digitized so digitalization and that, that was a sort of a strategy on the part of authorities to be able to uh organize women uh, again in the new is for the yes, republic sir. of gilead so they have taken digital digitalization as a as a tool uh, to tool or weapon or a sort yes, of tool to To exert more pressure over the community is yeah. patriarchal domination. Yeah. They use this When as a tool. June, who is a kind of uh, who is a prophet, and she is a little character, and she also says that we uh, when she was a uh, she was a working woman, then she worked in a company. The company was for transforming uh, physical book into some digital books. I saw this. And she did not like that task, uh, like that job. And yes, there are lot many people who who have to do that kind of job, which they did not like. So we also uh, we can make some kind of parallel between the kind of society and yes, uh, other uh, what we can say uh, society which is portrays. And towards this novel also has been taken as a sort of instruction. Let's see the house that it can be taken as a kind of instruction uh, manual for. authoritative regime yes sir yes sir yeah like where the domination could be exerted and where are the gaps that prevails yeah. in the society yes sir i had few uh, like questions but i don't i now i don't want to ask because we are already running so time and next session has to be sure sir thank done. you for giving me more research ideas thank you sir yeah thank you very much thanks everyone and i would special thanks to our uh, paper presenters uh, Jubina Rocha and Ms. Garima Singh Nargis, Pooja Joshi and Jaya for bringing such insightful papers and research. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks.